Norway, land of breathtaking natural beauty, a country with pronounced policies of environmental stewardship. At least, that's how it appears on the surface. Norway is also headquarters of the multi-billion dollar global salmon farming industry, including the world's two largest producers of farmed salmon, Cermak, whose largest shareholder is the Norwegian government, and Marine Harvest. These firms are leaving a trail of environmental, socio-economic, and cultural problems around the world. Fish farms are killing off wild salmon. What gives them the right to destroy livelihoods in countries far away? These Norwegian giants have set up shop along some of the most treasured coastlines on the planet, from the locks of Scotland, to the fjords of Chile, to the inlets of Canada's British Columbia. And while local and indigenous communities are left to deal with the environmental costs, the profits from these fish farms are exported out of those countries and straight into the pockets of distant shareholders. The shareholders should know that their business is having a great impact on our Chilean environment. It's not sustainable. That is why I would like to see the, the, the salmon farms taken out to the sea where they cannot be controlled and put on the coast or on land where they can be controlled. Despite sound research published in leading scientific journals such as Science and Nature, linking open cage salmon farms to major environmental problems, industry representatives continue cultivating confusion and controversy. If the fish farmers want to uh, play the same game the cigarette manufacturers did for many years and live in denial, they're welcome to it, but it's not going to give rise to any solutions. These papers are, are peer-reviewed, highly respected journal papers and they're all saying, look, we're doing something wrong there. Global outbreaks of parasites and disease, like sea lice, and the deadly infectious salmon anemia have decimated the Chilean industry and continue to affect wild salmon in Canada and wild sea trout in Ireland and Scotland. The industry is depleting other wild fish stocks around the world too. It can take up to five kilos of healthy, edible wild fish in Antarctic krill to produce just one kilo of farm salmon. The fish meal industry competes with human for this fish. Grinding the, the fish to for fish meal amounts to stealing, stealing good food out of their mouth to feed them into salmon, which are then a, a luxury item that only people in a rich country can afford. How long can we keep raping the seas of these white fish to produce food, to produce salmon? I don't think it's sustainable. All of these issues have led to an undeniable tipping point, and the pressure is now on the industry to either continue repeating the same mistakes of the past or chart a new course to a more sustainable future. Once great Atlantic salmon and sea trout runs in Norway's fjords have been heavily impacted by the salmon farming industry. Here, scientists, conservationists, and fish and wildlife enthusiasts have long been concerned about sea lice, viruses, and escaped fish from the farms. Together with their fathers and grandfathers, they fished for this huge salmon, and uh, they very much want to bring it on to the next generation. And all of them think it's uh, a tragedy that it's uh, close to extinction. We are left with two threats that we do know we have to handle in order to save the stock, and that is attack of salmon lice on out-migrating smolts from the stock, and the other is the high percentage of escaped farmed salmon entering the spawning stock. In this river we had counted uh, uh, 200 sea lice on one small fish, and this is uh, deadly. The sea trout is, uh, was vital for this community. Uh, for the tourist industry, but now it's uh, like nothing. Uh, the tourists won't come back. Despite these problems, in August 2009, Norway's then fisheries minister, Helga Pedersen, suggested the country should be boosting domestic production. Norway has moved to protect certain important wild salmon runs with national salmon fjords, off limits to farms. But even wild salmon runs from these fjords are vulnerable. 
They come here to try and catch the famous big Norwegian salmon. Outside the boundary of the National Salmon Fjord, there is uh, massive activity with salmon farming. And this is uh, areas which the wild smolts have to migrate through. So uh, there's still a big risk of them being infected by too many sea lice for them to handle. This past May, an international delegation of scientists, conservationists, indigenous and labour leaders from Scotland, Ireland, Chile and Canada journeyed to Norway to present their concerns at the annual general meetings of the two biggest salmon farming corporations in the world, Marine Harvest and Cermak. Hi, Alexander Morton. The Canadian contingent of the delegation included renowned salmon biologist Alexander Morton, Chief Bob Chamberlain, who chairs the First Nations Leadership Council's Aquaculture Working Group, and a representative from the British Columbia wilderness tourism industry who underlined the importance of wild salmon to other iconic species and the coastal tourism economies that depend on them. I have delivered to uh, the folks up here at the front a collection of documents from our tribal council, from some of the First Nation organizations in the province of British Columbia in Canada, all three of them. It is very rare that you'll find the topic that all three will write a letter of support. Salmon is one. One phone call, two days later I had these letters. Such is the importance of salmon to our people in Canada. The members of the delegation conveyed to the Board of Marine Harvest the frustrations of many in British Columbia about the industry's operations. You're a monolith in which uh, is crushing some very, very vital areas. It's gotten so extreme at this point, we're so low, that many of us, and myself included, think you just need to leave British Columbia or go into closed tanks because you're breaking the basic laws of the salmon. I have to disappoint you. We are not going to leave Canada. Even industry leaders like Marine Harvest CEO Asa Aule Michele and largest shareholder billionaire John Fredrickson have publicly acknowledged some of the industry's biggest problems. Sea lice on farm fish can be, th be a threat to wild fish in certain areas. Following a complaint filed by 4UM and Friends of the Earth Norway in May 2009, CERMAC will be assessed for breaching the OECD guidelines for multinational companies concerning production sustainability, employment conditions, and human rights in Canada and Chile. In British Columbia, where Norwegian companies own 92% of salmon farming operations, scientists warn that industry practices could lead to the collapse of once prolific wild salmon runs a resource vital to the province's environment, economy, and indigenous cultures. Despite the science and growing public concern, the industry, backed by the Canadian government, has been quick to dismiss the likely role of salmon farms in catastrophic collapses of certain wild salmon runs. A large Canadian delegation of government and industry representatives, led by the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, DFO, recently attended the world's biggest aquaculture trade show, Aquanor, in Trondheim, Norway, to promote salmon farming. Meanwhile, at home, news had just broken of a crisis on Canada's Fraser River with the collapse of its iconic sockeye run, once one of the world's largest salmon runs. Uh, we don't have any uh, uh, concrete analysis of what has happened in the current, uh, with the current salmon run, so it's too early to tell. Uh, I'm here in uh, Norway to support our aquaculture industry in Canada because it's a very important part of our economy. Many Canadians have been increasingly critical of DFO and its failure to acknowledge and deal with the impacts of salmon farming. These critics include former senior ministry scientists and managers like Otto Langer. I left fisheries in great disillusionment in 2002 and I have seen no improvement. Uh, there's a great conflict of interest within that agency. They are promoting fish farming and yet they have the Fisheries Act which says they have to conserve and protect fish habitat and protect wild fish and DFO's critics have good reasons to connect the mainly Norwegian salmon farms to the Fraser sockeye salmon crisis. We don't know if salmon farms are causing all the impacts on sockeye, but they seem to be a contributing factor, and we need to study and, and really take into account how much mortality these salmon farms are, are causing for juvenile sockeye. We have evidence that Fraser sockeye are on those farms, that they're getting lice on them, the industry association paid, uh, paid mouthpieces have already uh, you know, dismissed salmon farms, of course, as, as a cause. They've said that uh, the nearest salmon farms are over 100 kilometers away from the mouth of the Fraser, so therefore the uh, Fraser sockeye aren't at risk. Well, that's absolutely bunk because we've looked at the migration patterns of sockeye, uh, we've looked at their swimming speeds, and we know that they can be around those salmon farms in as few as a few days of, of swimming, and they may stay around those farms for quite a while. 
they are vulnerable. Uh, we've heard that they're too large uh, to be affected by uh, salmon farms and lice, and that's absolutely garbage as well, because in all the workshops that we've done with European scientists, they'll tell us that the much larger smolts from Europe, the Atlantic salmon and the sea trout, have absolutely been decimated by sea lice from salmon farms. Sea lice are just one of the many ecological impacts from fish farms in Canada. To make matters worse, waste, chemicals and toxins from open net salmon farms empty directly into the ocean, impacting on the entire surrounding marine ecosystem. On the other side of the Atlantic, once thriving sea trout and Atlantic salmon fisheries in Scotland and Ireland have also been decimated by the Norwegian salmon farming industry. Anyone who's been to Ireland who's familiar with some of the most magnificent fly fishing rivers in the world and they go in from Killary Harbour uh, into Connemara, some magnificent terrain. All of those rivers have been decimated. Despite a perpetual injunction by the High Court and a subsequent appeals body ruling to prevent salmon farming activities near Duanmore in County Donegal, Marine Harvest Ireland continues to pressure officials to open this location to their salmon farming operations. They continue to come. They still want to be there. They will not listen to the courts. They will not listen to the environmental impact assessments. They will not listen to the highest appeals tribunal that exists in this industry. So um, what will they listen to? We've hardly catch a sea trout now. Mostly young finnick we catch. The finnick that we are catching uh, you have to see the numbers of lice on the fish to believe. It doesn't seem to matter what good scientific data we come up with. Uh, the salmon industry are still in denial. In Scotland, Cermac subsidiary Mainstream announced it was vacating four Scottish fish farms in Shetland due to sea lice infestation earlier this year. The news followed the discovery of two outbreaks of the deadly disease known as infectious salmon anemia, or ISA detected in January and March 2009. While ISA does not affect humans, the death rate to infected wild and farmed Atlantic salmon can approach 100%. Despite some measures by the government to control the spread of the disease, six farm sites in Shetland have been infected with ISA so far in 2009. Nowhere are the industry's environmental problems more evident than in Chile which just a few years ago produced one out of every five farm salmon sold in the world. Now the industry here is in shambles. In 2008, Norwegian multinationals reported hundreds of millions of dollars in global losses due to a devastating outbreak of ISA in Chile, unleashed on local fish from poor management practices and non-existent environmental controls. Operating revenues are down mainly because of weaker prices and lower volumes, and that's uh, because of Chile. Led us to a net earnings for the company of minus 2.8 billion NOx. A dramatic result, which we of course are very, very disappointed for. In the lakes region of southern Chile, where breathtaking Andean vistas are dotted with salmon farms, the ecological devastation is hidden beneath the water's surface. Near the village of Cochamo, a scientific team from conservation group Oceana Chile explored the seabed beneath some recently closed farms using a remote operated underwater camera. It's only uh, some mud with very few life uh, because uh, the typical animals cannot stand the still uh, low oxygen con conditions and uh, Therefore, we cannot see uh, marine life here on these floors. The floor is uh, really like a desert. This is what is left after fish farm. So it takes a long time uh, to recover from, from all this uh, damage. Um, five, ten years or even more. This area is the headquarters for Chile's once booming salmon farming industry. The ISA disease wiped out three quarters of farmed salmon stocks. But those hardest hit by this collapse are the local communities, which are left with the environmental damage and massive layoffs, as many as 20,000 in the past two years. It's a lot of complicated to be without a job, because one who has children has been working for five months without a job. It's safe to fish because the ICE called it, and the ICE that they call it, that was what destroyed this. Dr. Alejandro Bushman of La Universidad de los Lagos explained the key environmental problems associated with salmon farming in Chile. 
we have problems that maybe are uh, connections with algal blooms that also are connected with excess nitrogen in the water. There is issues about the use of antibiotics, the use of anti-fouling and copper paintings no, to, to reduce fouling organisms. The nonprofit group Oceana Chile recently obtained data from the Chilean Ministry of Economy confirming the excessive use of antibiotics in Chilean farmed salmon. According to the minister's report, Chilean farming operations used almost 600 times more antibiotics than the larger operations in Norway. Not only big salmon farms, but also in many sites, very crowded number of farms using the same water bodies. So if a disease started to, started to appear, viruses or any pathogens, also sea lices, can be transported, can be contaminating other farms. So the spreading of diseases become a big, big issue. I really hope that we have learned the lesson in Chile that the environment is not infinite. We cannot just increase production without taking account the vulnerability that coastal system has. This shellfish diver from the island of Chiloé has been dealing with pollution from nearby salmon farms for years. Though he's glad to finally see them gone due to the ISA outbreak, much of their garbage remains. <laughs> The president of an artisanal fishermen's union discussed the impacts of the salmon farming crisis on his hard-hit town of Cayón. Radica en un desgaste social. Eh, hay una cierta crisis eh, psicológica de parte de la gente. Gente que, que ha caído en el alcohol eh, han sido trabajadores de la industria salmonera. But even before the crisis, these companies were not good social actors in Chile. Many divers working in the Chilean salmon farming industry have died in the past several years from unsafe working conditions. Hay buzos mariscadores que han sufrido accidentes en el mar, han muerto enredados en las redes y después de eso nadie se hace cargo. Y, y nosotros como organizaciones sindicales tenemos que ir en apoyo de esa gente, comprarle las urnas cuando la gente muere, ayudarlos después con, a conseguirle sillas de rueda, a conseguirle terapia. This indigenous Mapuche community near Puerto Montt, Chile, is dominated by five large fish feed factories whose effluent and exhaust pollute their farms and water. Many of these farms and factories now sit abandoned and dismantled on the foreshores and beaches of the region. Meanwhile, the Norwegian industry continues to ignore the possibility that it may have exported the deadly ISA virus to Chile, leading to this crisis, as the journal Archives of Virology recently explored. And the industry continues to pass the blame onto the Chilean government, ignoring the role it played in lowering environmental standards to boost profits. A company like Cermak should always uh, comply to the regulation and rules in each country of operation, and that uh, Cermak does that. There were several claims that the country or the government did not regulate enough. Okay, that's true. But it's also relevant to say that the companies did also make a very strong lobby against regulations. So at the end, you have a weak government, and on the other side, you have strong pressure from companies. Conservationists and labor leaders alike are pressuring these companies to take responsibility for the industry's collapse and to rebuild it more sustainably. The crises in Chile and Canada have ignited public sentiment and garnered major media attention. Citizens are rising up in Canada in rapidly growing numbers to save wild salmon from salmon farms. Is everyone with us on this quest? And it was people like you banding together, taking a stand, fighting for their coast, fighting for their salmon, and that's what we need to do here. I ask that we all join together to tell our governments there must be action, let's work together, 
Let's fight together, and together we will win. A letter presented to the King of Norway on behalf of concerned Canadian, Chilean, Scottish, and Irish community leaders recently stole the headlines at Aquinor, alerting the Norwegian people to the increasingly negative perception of their country from salmon farms. And as the industry attempts to push southward in Chile into still pristine Patagonian waters, they will likely meet intense opposition. This moment of vulnerability for the Norwegian salmon farming behemoths, financially and optically, presents a historic opportunity to force major changes on the industry, moving farms out of migratory wild salmon corridors and getting serious about closed containment technology that separates the farm fish from the wild, would be important first steps, but only if they're taken immediately. This is the future, that's the past. That's a dinosaur, it's dirty, they got away with it for a while, but all industry today has to deal with its waste. And so if you're going to farm fish in the ocean, that would seem the way to go. If different countries were all saying at the same time that uh, we, we don't want our waters to be polluted, this stuff belongs into containment, then uh, the price would go up a little bit. But it wouldn't matter because, again, Salmon is not a staple food. However, closed containment only addresses part of the problems of an industry that continues to rely on the depletion of wild fish for feed. For the coastal communities of Chile, for Canada's wild salmon, bears and people, for Europe's Atlantic salmon and sea trout, and for other global fisheries, the time to find a solution is running out. It's been shown in, in some areas where the, the fish farm element has been removed from the environment, that the fish have made a remarkable and quick recovery. The way they can be made to respond is to scream loud enough for them to have to hear. We have to raise help, and the best way to do that is to do that in organized fashion. The question now is whether the public will speak up and force the industry and governments in the countries where marine harvest and CIRMAC operate, those that consume farmed salmon, and all around the world to clean up their act before it's too late. There's been some excellent science done by people in this room about the impact of having salmon farms in close proximity to sheltered inlets where wild salmon pass through, baby wild salmon. Have you considered moving the location of these farms 